So I'm going to talk a bit about the cluster as a service capability that we've developed for the Jasmine cloud. So uh, the things the things I'm going to talk about are, you know, what is cluster as a service? What kind of benefits might you see? How do you access the data that's on Jasmine from that service? A uh, quick demonstration, and then if I get time, uh, a little bit about how it works for the for the nerds. Um, this is where we sit. Uh, so this the cluster as a service currently operates in the external cloud. Uh, so in this cloud part of the context diagram. Um, so cluster as a service is providing building blocks for you to assemble your own custom platform in the Jasmine cloud. So what it does is allows users of the Jasmine external cloud to easily manage these clusters of machines that are stamped out from these um, templates. And the clusters, they come pre-installed with particular software. So we'll see some examples of that on the next slide. Um, the Jasmine Cloud Portal provides a user-friendly interface to deploy and manage these. Um, we'll see that in the demonstration. Um, these clusters, some of well, some of these clusters, the ones which uh, have multiple sort of worker nodes, can be grown and shrunk, obviously within the envelope of your tenancy quota. Um, these clusters generally take 20 minutes or less to deploy and configure so you can sort of manage you can envisage a world where you would use these as disposable clusters where you spin a cluster up and run your workload and then tear it back down again um, but that's obviously not great if you want to use the cluster to run a service so we also have thought about that and there's a, an option in there to apply security patches to long-lived clusters easily um, it is still your responsibility, as it is with the rest of the cloud, to actually remember to apply security patches. So. Uh, the benefits of, of using cluster as a service. So these are the down the right hand side. There's a bunch of logos for all the types of cluster that we support. So we have an identity cluster, Kubernetes. Um, Gluster, which is a distributed file system. We, you can get your own Slurm and we also support Pangeo, which is a framework that, which is a, a bunch of library. It's a project that provides like an opinionated Jupyter notebook service. So you can spin up your own Jupyter notebook service. So what you get is dedicated clusters for your projects. So no competing for job slots on Lotus with other, with everyone else. Um, this clustering software, it's difficult to configure and CAS can do it for you. Um, you still get root access as the cluster manager, so you can apply your own customizations on top of the CAS managed clusters. Um, try not to break the actual CAS functionality when you do that. Um, your users don't have to be Jasmine users, which is an interesting one. So only the managers of the tenancy have to be only the people who are deploying and managing the clusters have to be Jasmine users that can access the cloud portal. Um, CAS provides an identity manager that you deploy inside your tenancy and that manages the identities inside the clusters and they're integrated across all the clusters in a tenancy. Um, so, and then, as I said before, these are the sorts of clusters it supports. So you can use Kubernetes to build services for end users. You can run a Jupyter Notebook platform for your project using Pangeo. Um, you can run your own Slurm cluster for your project. Um, accessing data is slightly trickier because this is on the external cloud. So um, that means they're outside of the Jasmine firewall and so they can't mount the Cedar archive and group workspace file systems because of the because of this difference between the users. Um, however, you can still access data via the usual mechanisms for external access. So the HTTP access we provide and especially the object store um, and the clusters, they still benefit from being co-located in the same data center as that data um, and we strongly recommend that CAS users use the object store and um, so I'm going to see if this video will play hopefully come on so this is just showing the cloud portal interface so there's the clusters tab I go to new cluster select a cluster type um, click on it fill in some 
details for the cluster, pick an IP for it, fill in some passwords, um, pick an admin IP range. So this is the this is a, a security feature to restrict the IP addresses that can access the admin interface of the identity manager. So um, so that you can only access it from your institutional place and then this is an accelerated version of the cluster deployment so it goes through all these tasks and 20 minutes later you have a an identity manager the identity manager is actually the thing that takes the longest to deploy out of everything um, for some reason it takes a long time to configure free ipa there's the machines that it's created in your tenancy um, so I'm just going to skip this video forward a little bit and you can see that it eventually becomes ready. I'm going to also deploy a Pangeo cluster next to this. So um, I'm going to skip over this because it's not that interesting. Um, you, th this is an interesting bit. You can, so you can, for your notebook cluster, you can customize the number of CPUs, the amount of RAM and the storage that your notebook servers will get. Um, and then this goes off and it does the same thing, creates and configures. So while, we're look, while that's creating, we're going to look at what the identity manager looks like. So this is what free IPA looks like. Uh, you log in with the admin password that you set at the time. You can manage your users in here. Um, the, and you can also manage groups in here. So you can create new users. You can put them in groups so that they can access particular clusters. And so I'm going to skip forwards a bit in here and talk about a bit more about Pangeo, which is the one of the interesting bits. So this um, Pangeo, Pangeo, as I said, provides a notebook interface. So we can go to the notebook interface for the cluster that we just deployed. We can log in as, um, I think I actually demonstrate adding this user, that this user can't get in to start with, and then we add them to a group in free IPA and then they can get in. So this group is automatically created by the cluster as a service system. You can add your user to it. And then, and only then can they get into that specific notebook service. So you, you so this is providing a way for you to manage your community's users. And, and then once you're in, you get access to a notebook interface. So let's skip this forward a bit. Um, and here's the notebook interface. This actually has full support for things like Dask. So this is this is showing a Dask cluster um, doing some random computations. Um, and this is the Dask task graph. So we can see that evolve if I, if I do this. So this is Dask running. You can see that it's spinning out new workers and things in the Kubernetes cluster. So I think that's probably enough of the demo. Um, so you've so, got about two minutes, Matt, all right. Um, I just wanted to, okay, cool. I just wanted to talk about uh, a use case. So the British Antarctic Survey are using Pangeo on cluster as a service. They're using um, machine learning to find structures, large scale structures in climate model ozone data. Uh, these methods, they're emerging as tools for robustly identifying coherent structures and Pangeo provides tools to, for researchers to use these methods in a fast and intuitive way. Um, part, partly this is down to the sharing aspects of notebooks that Ag was talking about before. Um, and the cluster as a service for facilitated this work by providing the Pangeo platform, making it easy to use. And they've identified some large scale structural ozone differences. So the very last thing I wanted to say was just a little bit about how it works. So there's a few technologies involved here. Um, our cloud is built on OpenStack and the cluster as a service uses the heat orchestration service. Um, that's driven by a tool called Ansible, which is used to automate the deployment and configuration of the clusters and the Jasmine Cloud Portal works with a tool called AWX or Ansible Tower, which manages the execution of the Ansible jobs. So that's just, that's a slide for the nerds really. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that, that's all I wanted to say about 